Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Mark 16 verse 15 Ten years ago, I had the opportunity to visit what they call the only mountain in Surabaya. I was in, in Indonesia for an Asia Pacific interfaith youth camp on climate change. And one of our excursions was to visit the local tip, a mountain of waste just outside the city. The staff were really keen to show us all of the great new developments that they had made in capturing the toxic liquids that leach out of the piles of landfill and draining them into a separate processing system. They were very proud of this achievement. I was horrified. I couldn't believe that this was new and not something that had been done for years, as it has in Australia. Meanwhile, many of my new friends from around the Asia Pacific nations were stunned. They wished that their countries had such great facilities. And later, when they talked about their campaigns to reduce the use of CFCs in their countries, I was stunned again, believing that the world had dealt with this issue and protecting the ozone layer 40 years ago. Yet this is clearly not filtered down to everywhere as I had believed. These were seminal experiences for me and important reminders of how contextual addressing environmental issues can be. But I don't see this as any reason for us not to try and lead the charge. And often the tables are turned. When I visited Durban in South Africa for a Youth for Eco Justice conference, we went to visit a project at a local river where unemployed local youth were finding skills and money cleaning up the river and selling the recyclable cans, bottles, cardboard and paper that they collected. As the river and its edges got cleaner, they were setting up a park and a walk, encouraging local tourism and connecting their disadvantaged community with nature. It left me buzzing with excitement. Thankfully, since the War and Waste TV series began on the ABC last year, I've seen a wave of new interest in reducing waste and plastic in Australia and people seeking zero waste alternatives. I've spent months preaching about how Christians can get involved in this movement out of our love for a frugal God who dislikes waste. In fact, after, the, after Jesus fed the 5,000, he insisted that his disciples gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. John 6:12. I've also learned how to make beeswax wraps as a zero waste alternative to cling wrap for covering bowls, cut vegetables and leftovers. And this has given me the privilege of being able to travel all around congregations in New South Wales and the ACT running workshops on how to make these wraps. This has been really exciting and I've found that the workshops have been really well attended, sometimes even to the point where we've had to cut off registrations and about half of the registrations each time have been from non-church people. The groups have been enthusiastic and fun to teach and have shared other ideas and tips with each other at the time so that everybody gets to learn from each other. I've also really enjoyed watching a bit of a transformation during the workshops. People coming in nervous and unsure but then leaving smiling and feeling empowered. The wraps might be small but they're practical and an easy way to make real change. I sense that people have been looking for that, which is why they enjoy the workshops so much. This is one of the possibilities that I really love to talk about, where caring for the environment can actually really help us find new opportunities as churches. For example, I'd love to run some workshops on how to make reusable shopping bags or produce bags, but I can't because I don't know how to sew. I never learned at school and my mum has arthritis so she didn't push me too hard when she started trying to teach me and it turned out my stitches were awful. Now I wish that I'd learned. But I'm aware that one of the abundant resources that we have in the church is older people with various skills. So there are many churches with people who could offer workshops to those like me who would like to learn how to sew, knit, crochet, garden or a host of other different skills that can help us care for the environment. For example, Port Melbourne Uniting Church in Victoria hold a Skills Fest event each year where they facilitate matches like this 
people come with skills to offer or skills they would like to learn and share and learn together throughout the day. Meanwhile, St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton in Geelong has a repair cafe which regularly meets for people to come and bring any of their broken items and be taught how to fix them. Their men's shed is involved, they help people fix furniture and electrical items and there's also a sewing room full of overlockers and materials and sewing machines so that you can get your clothes fixed. I know both of these churches really well, having presented them with Five Leaf Eco Awards in recognition of the efforts that they have made for the environment. Repair cafes with no church links are also currently popping up all around Australia and the world. This is a big movement, gathering steam, along with toy libraries, community gardens and keeping chickens and bees. These things will happen without us, but how much better when we bring them into the church? Today there are more churches than I can list with community gardens and even St John's Anglican Cathedral in Brisbane have their own bees and chickens. Uniting Church in the city, Wesley in Perth, have bees and a small garden on the top of their multi-storey office building in the middle of the city, along with the largest installation of solar panels in the Perth CBD. Meanwhile, Brunswick Uniting Church has now been helping people to access sustainable and organic food products and staples for 18 years. They started in 2000. They buy in bulk, sell these products at their food co-op, essentially at cost, and that means that you don't have to be wealthy to care for the planet. By following these examples, churches can reconnect with their communities, deepen their discipleship, encourage people to explore theology and share their faith. This sounds like good news for all creation to me.